Hello and welcome. My name is Ton Kramer and I'd like to show you uh, a couple tips I have on how to train your uh, autonomous car. So here's an example of a left lane keeping driver that I trained a few weeks back. And at first we'll watch the, the outcome. This is kind of what you might be aiming for. can see that it handles the curves pretty well and overall um, quite stable. So what did I do to create that? So here's uh, about 10,000 uh, images put together in a movie. This is the, the recording log from that training session. So when I drive, uh, at first I have kind of a a goal for the uh, quantity of data that I'm, I'm looking for. As a, a, a good first approximation, I'm looking for about 10,000 image records. A little more won't hurt. I try not to do less. And what I do first is uh, I spend some time and get comfortable with, con with the controls uh, without thinking about recording. And this is just to help save in editing time later. The more comfortable you are with the controls, the better you are at just getting what you need the first time and not having to remove mistakes from your, your data later. Once I feel like I'm comfortable, uh, then I divide my training session into three parts where I do three different styles of driving. The first style that I do is uh, kind of a, a precision mainline driving. And this is where I'm not so much worried about uh, speed, and that was kind of the, the first driving that you saw. I'm trying to just drive right down the very, very center of the lane. And I'll try to do about two laps of that, or roughly 10%. Uh, of my data and then so that's the first style of driving uh, kind of precision mainline the second style of driving that I try to do is I try to drive that mainline with uh, small oscillations and what I'm doing here is uh, I'm not doing it right away let me go to about here okay here you can kind of see I'm driving the main line, but I'm deliberately, and it's not important to do this with speed, but I'm de deliberately oscillating around the center. And this is to give your uh, training, your neural net, the opportunity to see what the track looks like at different angles, and then to learn how to correct back to the center. So here you don't want to overdo this, but you like to see uh, a good two laps, maybe three laps of this kind of driving. And then probably the uh, the third and then the third type of driving that you want to do is more like the way you would normally drive, but you probably want to slow down until you um, have really uh, well you know what actually I so I do just kind of normal driving as a third type, but I just thought of the fourth type that I do, and that's where I try to, uh, this is kind of a slower oscillation. I try to bounce back and forth between the extremes of the lane, and this is to help establish where uh, those lane boundaries are for the model, so it can, it can learn to approach it, but but uh, treat it as a, as a barrier. So yeah, I guess there are four types. Uh, I was thinking there was three initially. So it's the precision driving on the main line. You can do that quite slowly. Um, oscillating or, and then oscillating around that main line, kind of giving it an opportunity to learn those small corrections. And then uh, normal driving, which uh, which is where I'm uh, picking up speed a little bit and allowing myself to, um, to, to not drive right down the middle of the road. 
and then a, a slower uh, oscillation where I'm um, hitting first one side and then the other of the lane and um, in, in general not trying to overcorrect. So those uh, three types of or four types of driving mixed together when you plot them in a histogram look kind of like this. This is what I got. So there, there was about 10,000 records in this and you can see about roughly half of my driving was uh, was there were there was uh, no left or right steering so this zero means basically straight ahead so for a, a as as much as I was going back and forth you will still see a lot but I think this represents maybe a little more than half of the data if you by overall volume if you look at the volume under that curve so there's still a significant portion of my data which had uh, turns, uh, which had had some curvature in the, the steering, it wasn't straight ahead. So zero straight ahead and one is full right and negative one is full left. So here you can kind of see the result of the kind of oscillating um, driving that I was doing. And then this, uh, the, this hump kind of indicates that Overall, my track was a right right turn track, and I drove uh, only in one direction. Uh, you can drive in both directions, and I have seen that occasionally helpful, but I think when you're getting started, you want to keep it simple and um, just drive it the way that you intend to, to test it. And then uh, from there, you can um, kind of experiment. You can experiment with uh, different mixtures of those four types of driving. And I've seen uh, other people, other drivers that uh, decided to drive a little more crazy. They tried to really go outside the lines and come back. And uh, I wasn't sure that that would actually converge to something, but uh, I, I have seen that given enough data, it will, that you will see a driver that um, that's able to go off the track and come on, but it's also uh, not uh, as willing to stay inside the lane. So it will, over time, um, drive the way that you drove. But I wanted to give you the, the confidence that you can, uh, I think those oscillations actually lead to st stability in your final driver. And it doesn't do so at a, a sacrifice. It, you won't actually see all those oscillations in your final uh, driver. You, you saw that it was uh, pretty stable. So I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, just put them in the comments below. Thanks.